Thank you, Jake. Uh, what a joy and a pleasure it is to be with each of you. Um, I want to first of all say that uh, this program that we have here, we're standing on many shoulders. And I first want to give special recognition to uh, AC uh, Crawford Mosley High School here in Panama City. Phenomenal school, uh, phenomenal leadership, and uh, many of the things that we're able to do, it's because we have uh, the kind of administration and leadership uh, that really has a vision for the future, and that's exciting for me. Um, and we have an awesome, awesome technological team and staff that are just, all of these hands have been around me. So uh, if things look great, it's because of them. Uh, and I'm certainly thrilled that I have two of my students. They'll be presenting in the presentation today, and they'll be available to answer questions. But they decided to join me, so I'm really happy to have Dancel here with me uh, and Abby Turner. Uh, they're great senior students, and we have much to share. We know our time is limited, so uh, I want to be as uh, prompt as possible. And uh, so let's begin. Let's begin our lesson. Um, I want to talk about amazing teens with anatomage. And I really want to focus on not only just the techniques of using anatomage, but I want to talk about the philosophy of how we have been able to incorporate anatomage into our program, into our developing program. And it has just been a wonderful, wonderful experience. And I want to share some of the things that we're doing here uh, in Panama City. Uh, before we begin, uh, I am a granddad. I am thrilled. This is my grandson, Dallas J. Wade. Uh, it was great having kids, but the reward of having kids is I have a grandbaby. And so uh, after I leave doing what I do professionally, uh, I try to spend the majority of my time hanging out with my new Spartan buddy. So I just thought I'd show that because uh, he is the joy of our life. Um, uh, Jake has already shared about who I am, so don't want to go into too much detail. I just simply want to say that uh, when I retired from medicine, <clears throat> we decided to try to figure out how we could add value to our community. Um, eventually, I came here to Mosley High School, and I had this idea, why not let's incorporate all that we've learned in medicine. And instead of trying to get kids motivated in college, let's find a way to get them motivated in high school to have a passion, to see new things, to have hands on. So <clears throat> that's how our program really got going. And it just evolved from there. And uh, Anatomosh has just taken us to another level. And I want to share with you uh, on how that happened. And uh, hopefully to give you some great ideas. Uh, Marie and I, uh, we are from Cleveland and uh, we originally from Jacksonville, but we went to school in Cleveland and then we eventually arrived here. Uh, our program, uh, the pre-med program, uh, started with 15 students and we evolved and we've grown over the years. We have uh, about uh, plus or minus 150 students that are actively involved in various uh, uh, events and clinics. And so here are just a few. We have pre-med morning and pre-med dissection. Uh, we try to have at least somewhere between 40 to 50 physicians to speak. Um, matter of fact, Abby, mom uh, is a uh, is a nurse, but she's a, a physician uh, as a doctor degree in nursing. So she came and shared with us uh, what she does uh, with uh, anesthesia. It was pretty awesome. Uh, are we offer internships for our seniors? We have rites of passage. We have phlebotomy school. We do CPR. We offer AP biology, um, anatomy. We do anatomy in class, and we also offer anatomy uh, in the laboratory, uh, some organic chem chemistry tutoring. HOSA, and the list goes on. We are committed to just helping our students learn, grow, develop, and challenge them so that when they do go to college, they'll have that confidence and that self-efficacy to feel that they can achieve whatever they're uh, placed with or whatever challenges they may have. And here's a quick pick. Uh, this is our, this is one group of our students. And uh, in this pick, they have uh, their, their pre-med shirt. So when we travel, we try to make sure that they are dressed appropriately. Uh, here, we've, we've taken a picture in our student union. Many times we'll go to the hospital or clinics and kids who completed their rites of passage, uh, they will be awarded their jackets. And I'll show you some pictures about that 
in just a moment. Uh, this is our pre-med morning. So we arrive at seven o'clock, 645. And this is just the thrill to see young people who are 14, 15, 16, 17 years old that will get up before school. Our school starts at 815. They arrive early. They set it up. And for me, my goal uh, is to empower the student, to teach them so that they can learn and then they lead others. But this is a pre-med morning where we invite a physician or a nurse, a physical therapist, anyone in the medical community that they're interested in meeting and listening to and learning more about their career. And let's just be honest, it's so much better to know what you want to do in high school versus going to three years of undergrad and then discover, hey, this is not what I want to do. Uh, we also have pre-med morning dissection. Uh, we usually arrive uh, these guys open up the clinic and get things going, but we start at 645. We arrive getting the lab set up and you can see here where we actually have been able to roll in the anatomage uh, to be a part of our program. What I love about this system also is that the wheels allow you to move it from room to room. So many times we will have it in our lab and then we'll switch and take it to our classrooms so that the students can kind of, you can teach from it and I can show specimens. And we're going to show you a few of those today. It's going to be pretty exciting. Uh, here is another uh, observation. Uh, I believe that's you, Abby. I think that's you. Yes. <laughs> that's Abby. And, and, and she'll tell you more, but uh, Abby is sort of like what we call our anatomos anatomy specialist, and uh, she uh, helps train other students. And so you can see here where they're in the lab with different age groups, uh, 12th grade, 11th grade, 10th grade. And we've even started ninth graders working on the anatomage. And she has an anatomage morning separate from pre-med morning. So that's been pretty awesome to see how the kids are coming out on Fridays and they're participating. Uh, we're Again, we're here in lab. And uh, we take our kids to bodies exhibit. We try to show them everything that we can hands on. And then we went to Atlanta a couple of years ago and we took them to the body exhibit so that they could actually see physical uh, human cadavers. And that was just an amazing experience. What I was pleased with to hear uh, the director or instructor at body say, uh, how did you kids learn all that? Where You guys know all the systems, origin insertion. It was because uh, of the program that we're offering here at Mosley. Uh, here is a, oh, this is our summer uh, dissection. And in this dissection, it's three days where we invite people from uh, on the East Coast. Uh, we've had people from Jack, students from Jacksonville, Tallahassee, Florida, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, uh, mid Florida, and here in our city, they've come for our summer dissection. And we have incorporated anatomage as a part of those dissections. So we have real life specimens, sheep hearts, cow hearts, liver, pancreas, spleen, but then we're able to give them a three-dimensional look and they're able to cut and slice. And that has just really uh, taken our summer program over the top. Um, here we, we offer lectures. We're in our lecture room. So we now roll the anatomage from lab uh, and we brought it into our classroom. And here uh, you can see the students are learning the bones. Uh, we have visiting doctors that come. Matter of fact, Kyle was a student of mine uh, during our first year pre-med program. So he completed his academic uh, studies, did his internships. And so he called me, Dr. Wade, I'm here in uh, Panama City, Florida. And I say, hey, Kyle, once a year, we want you to come and share. So were you here when he came? Were you here? Yeah. He, he, he just really gave us tremendous insight and the kids were just motivated uh, to work even harder after they had a chance to talk with him and for him to share his experience. Experiences and uh, he told them they would live. I was, he says, Dr. Way's a little tough, but you'll be okay. And, uh, but when he went to Florida State, uh, he did excellent. And uh, he still talks to me about that today. Uh, here's uh, just a shot of our phlebotomy. And from here, we use anatomage to show blood vessels. And there, here we are again, we're in uh, lecture and uh, we're, we're teaching anatomage. I think that's Abby there 
doing doing what she does best. And this was uh, when we first received Anatomage, we were figuring things out. We wrote it into a different classroom. And uh, we cover systems. And this is what I wanted to share. One of our main concerns is that we cover uh, all of the anatomical uh, systems. We want to make sure that we do digestion and respiratory, and we go through every system, some in more detail than others, but we try to hit every system to make sure that the kids are well-rounded. And uh, one student hollered out to me once, this is awesome. So I love that because if I can get them motivated, uh, they'll learn. And we have two classrooms. We have a lab and a classroom. You can see them there and our students are engaging. And again, we're teaching them the details, not just anatomical structures, but how to use the pins and how to use the systems. And uh, here are our interns. We take our interns to clinics. Uh, we take them to the hospital. Uh, we teach them special procedures, particularly our juniors and seniors. And here's our internship. I believe we were, uh, at, is that the barometric chamber? I think, I think that's the barometric chamber there. And here we visited, uh, uh, pediatrics. And when we go visit a location, we then bring the students back. And so we went to the pediatrics and they talked about bones. We bring those ideas back and we play with an atomage, let the students investigate what they had learned and uh, see if they can apply it um, on an atomage. We visited the hyperbaric chamber and we, we pull out the lungs on an atomage and deal with things of that nature. And then this is just a group of our interns having fun. And uh, we also recognize our students. We now have created um, the anatomage. You're part of the 12. Are you the anatomage specialist? Yes. Okay. So Abby is a part, does the anatomage specialist. And you're helping with lab, though, Dancel Jordan. And Dancel is now helping with lab. So we break our groups up where our students are literally uh, leading the way, particularly our seniors. We want our seniors to lead the way. We want them to learn. We want them to develop, but they know that they're learning because one day they're going to be upper leaders and uh, we recognize them and give them awards, part of an Atomos specialist. We make a big deal about it. Uh, we even offer the rates of passage where our students receive a lab jacket and they have to earn and they have credits that we give them. And anatomage, anatomage is a part of that checklist. So as they're completing assignments, we're checking them off and signing them. And then here's just the banquet where the parents are celebrating their kids. And there, there's our gang <clears throat> from our last banquet Uh just a wonderful, wonderful group of students uh, who are motivated. They're focused. Uh, the majority of my seniors uh, get into great colleges, and they've been very pleased. I keep hearing very positive responses from them. Well, now I want to introduce to you some of our students, uh, our interns, and they're going to share how they've learned, and then I'll wrap it up, and I'll share some philosophies that we've used to incorporate anatomage uh, into our academic program. So let, let's, let's take our journey. Hi, my name is Abby Turner. I'm a senior here at Mosley High School, and I hold the position of anatomage director in Mosley's pre-med program. In the future, I plan on becoming a veterinarian. My name is Stephen Dansel, and I'm a senior here at Eddie Crawford Mosley High School. My position in pre-med is an intern for Dr. Wade, and I aim to become a cardiothoracic surgeon. My name is Ashton Williams. I am a senior here at Mosley High School, and I hold the position of freshman lab director for the pre-med program. I plan to study at UTA to hopefully become a vet or an animal physical therapist. Hi, my name is Abby Turner. Hi, my name is Abby. And there's Dansel. Dansel, uh, you want to tell them who you are and just give us greetings? My name is Stephen Dansel, and I'm a senior here at Mosley High School. And as previously mentioned, I serve as a lab assistant, and I help throughout a pre-med program as, you know, just someone to come to for help or for advice or anything that can relate to pre-med. Excellent. So, and Dance was going to share with you guys. You know, the table. So if you click the scalpel right here, you were able to clip any part of the heart. As you can see, you can dissect it and see the interior and structures of the heart. 
and then you can reset it. And then you can also as well click these other buttons. You can cut it in half in any uh, fashion that you want to. And after that, you can, you can peel away layers of the specimen that is in front of you. So let's say this is the pericardium, you can get rid of it. And then it will show the uh, epicardium or the, yeah, the epicardium of the heart. And then peel it away again. Then you got also the interior of the heart with the blood vessels. Then as well with this button, you can go a certain organ or structure to show what it looks like without all the other vessels in the way. And if you double tap it again, yeah. you'll get a clear view of the area surrounding it. You can also label each individual structure. So if you click the eye and then you can go to the circle next to each uh, name, as you can see, There will be a line pointing towards that same structure and that the name will be present. And you can as well color each different structure. Let's say you can change that to pink. You can change the part of valves to blue. And so forth. So afterwards, you can also take the decisional views of the heart or whatever specimen that is present in front of you in the anatomist table, you could do an anterior view, posterior view, superior view, and uh, inferior view. And then since we're using the heart structure, you can use an EKG to show the heart rate. And you can adjust whether or not you can uh, accelerate or decrease the beats per minute. And as well, if you click this pen icon right here, you can as well draw in whatever fashion you want to, depending on what you want to do or what your lesson may be. And once you click this house icon right here, you can pick whatever a uh, specimen that you want to, judging from, it could be a cadaver from any kind of ethnicity, as well as other specimens. You can even add on to other structures, such as the respiratory system, digestive, skeletal even, and muscular. There's a test and game option that you can use to test your students or friends and it can put, be played as a competitive way to prepare yourselves for any competitions. And you can also change the ratio size of the heart, whether you can adjust it or not. If it's not too, if it's too big for you, or if it's too small. And then over here, if you see this taskbar right here, you can also. Uh, add on or remove any layers of that same specimen. So as you can see, if I move the taskbar, you can also see the blood vessels that are around the, ch uh, the chambers and vessels. Thank you. Well, I'm very proud of Dan. So, uh, because one of the things that he's doing is he's also teaching other lower classmen. And uh, I think you've been on the machine for, well, a year, about a year. Yeah, but since junior year, yes. Yeah. So he is learning and growing and teaching others. And here's another one of our students that I, I think you're going to be very excited to, to see. And just want to introduce her to you guys. Hold on just a second. Hmm. We have Abby Turner. And uh, Abby, uh, tell them about yourself and share with them before you present. Um, so, hi, my name is Abby Turner. Um, I hold the position of an Atomos director in the pre-med program. Um, in the future, I hope to become a veterinarian. 
And um, pre-med has helped me by like giving me a head start academically, showing me how to work the anatomage and how I can do it on live specimens. And uh, Abby's doing a great work here and uh, we're really excited to have her part of our board of 12 for pre-med. And uh, let's take a peek, let's look. Now we're gonna look at the heart and the blood. So the blood comes in through the superior and the inferior vena cava, and this brings this in blood into the heart. So now we're gonna cut the heart to see. So then you can see the superior vena cava leading into the right atrium, which is right here. And then with a different cut, we can see how this right here being the right atrium, the right the blood then goes through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. After it goes through um, the right ventricle, we will then remove these layers and we will see the pulmonary valve in which it goes up through the pulmonary artery, which is, this is the pulmonary trunk. It will go out through the pulmonary artery, which is the only artery in the body that's deoxygenated, and it will go to the lungs to get oxygenated. Once doing that, it will come in through the pulmonary vein. Upon coming in the pulmonary vein, mm -hmm. the blood will then enter the left atrium. After the left atrium, it'll enter the mitral or bicuspid valve, with the coordinate tendon A, which is also on the tricuspid valve. After that, we will see it going to the left ventricle, followed by it leading up to the septum, to the aortic arch, um, going to the top of the body and to the bottom of the body through the descending aorta. All right, so once you're loading it up, we're then gonna go and filter to just get the cardiovascular system. With this, we'll get the heart, the greater vessels, the veins, and the arteries. So when the blood is coming, it comes through the superior vena cava from the top, which is shown right here, and the inferior vena cava through the bottom, and this will bring the blood to the heart. After that, cut it so we can see the inside. And once going through the superior vena cava and the inferior, it will then go to the right atrium. After that, it will go through the and then finally, Ashton Williams, she's a cheerleader, so she could not be here today, but uh, this is, uh, she's going to share our final presentation today, and then I'm going to share some philosophies with you. So as previously stated by my fellow student, Abby Turner, we are able to look at the heart in person because we are able to see the digital dissections on the anatomosh. And because we are on the anatomage so much learning it, when we do tests or any dissection, we're able to see every structure and identify it. So after we go through all the structures of the heart and the blood flow and all that good stuff, we are able to start trailing and kissing our students. So when we do that, we press this little icon that has note cards on it. It will pop up the quiz mode, and then we will customize it to cardiovascular. Right now it already has the heart pulled up, but normally it'll have the entire systems pulled up. And so we'll select heart, greater vesicles, and then we'll do the plus button, and that will actually show the names as you're adding them in, and that will make sure they're circulated into the quiz. Then you'll press add to quiz, because it has to completely replace the basic functions. And then it'll ask if it pre-exists, do you want to replace it? And you'll click yes. And then you'll continue. And you are able to actually go into settings and have the amount of questions you want. So let's say 10, the amount of points per correct, 10 again. And then you can also do negative points or just have it not count the wrong ones. So let's do five for that. Then press apply. And you'll save it and you will go to add to folder. And you can actually create folders. We already have heart pulled up. So you'll double tap that and you'll add in the name. So we're going to call it heart test. Enter. And then it says, are you sure you want to overwrite existing preset? Because we already have made one previously. You'll click yes. And then I always do this just for safe, adding it to quiz history. And then you'll click finish and it'll say successfully saved. And then it will load it back up and you'll press start and it will start asking you questions. And then if you ever want to exit out, you can click that X and say yes. And then 
It'll show you how many got right, how many got wrong, the percent of your score. And then another cool feature with this is we can actually go into a game. We'll press load, quiz history, the heart with pericardium, the 25 structures added. We'll go into game, start. It'll say compatible touchscreen not found for competitive mode. You'll still say okay. And then you'll choose a number of players and you can actually enter in names. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. And you'll press start. And it'll have all the screens showing the different players. And they'll press answer, then click the structure. So say if I got it wrong, well, that's if I got it right. But if you click a structure and then confirm and say correct, well, you'll click it and it'll say it's wrong, and then it'll go on to the next player that pressed answer. And it'll continue doing that until the entire questions have been answered. And then whoever has the highest points and score will win. So it's just shown what happens when you get the answer correct, but if you get it wrong, so it wants to pull the name out and say, I press the order, I press confirm, it'll say wrong. And then whoever press answer next, it'll do that. Confirm and it's wrong again, it'll continue to go on. If everyone gets it wrong, it'll skip the question. And then at the end of the test, it'll recycle it. So that way they have an opportunity to get it right. Excellent, excellent. And that's one of the most exciting things we enjoy about Anatomage is that our students are always learning and they're always growing and developing. And they're very, they're savvy when it comes to this tech. Hello, student Adam Turner. So um, here is what we wanted to show you all is uh, uh, our students were pretty excited. And our first day of receiving Anatomage was so amazing because they brought in the truck. Everyone was excited. <laughs> but the lady who was delivering it didn't know we were at high school when she saw our setup. And so uh, I wanted to share it. I think it's a funny, but here it is. What, what'd you ask again? Is this a high school? Yes. <laughs> what, what is the purpose of this thing? <laughs> so they were in shock. They just couldn't believe it. And uh, so I want to share some of our teaching philosophies and which I think is so important. And you can see my students are very competent and I enjoy working with them because they think fast. They're on the cutting edge. They're creative. And I'm often learning from my students uh, because we'll discover something new in an atomage and they'll run to me and say, Dr. Wade, look at this. And I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't see that. But that's the that's the juice of life there when they're learning on their own and they're they're. It, I'm, I'm experiencing self-discovery and we love that. So here are a few of our philosophies and then we'll take a few questions. Um, number one is I believe in four principles. I think there are four major principles, but I added an additional, additional principle to give us five. Number one, developing relationships with the student is so important. Number two, uh, letting them watch one. Then, uh, in other words, they're watching me. They do one. This is where I allow them to do what they saw and then teach one. This is where I empower the student to now teach other students. And then most of all, we bring in the competition and we recognize and celebrate each student as being unique and special to us. And so here, uh, before uh, I begin the Anatomage class, uh, I deal with relationships. Um, I wrote this quote, uh, this is the relationship. This is the oil that never spoils. When you develop good relationships, I believe students are open-minded to receiving instructions and correction and uh, sharing their thoughts and feelings about how they're making progress. Uh, I believe that relationships uh, can be developed in three basic ways that I use, which is I want the student to know that I care about them. So I try to listen to them. Uh, I try to help them, which means I want to solve a problem. You're in my anatomy class. Uh, I'm going to help you learn anatomy and I'm going to make sure you get an A or a B. We're going to work really hard. If you do your very best, I'm going to be there for you. And then uh, finally, under relationship is trust. I want you to know you can trust me. And I think the most powerful way of teaching that is whatever I say, I do. Every now and then they'll get me. I'll I'll come in two minutes late sometime, but uh, they they'll get over. Wait, you're a minute late. You're thirty. You're, you're thirty seconds late. But uh, I want them to know that they can trust. 
they can trust me. Uh, and there's no significant learning uh, that can occur without significant relationships. So we know how vitally important that is. And uh, here is uh, our day of pizza and pop. Uh, we grab some of our seniors after a dissection and we uh, sometimes we'll have socials. And there's my wife there. She decided uh, she usually joins us on the socials. And here's another picture of us. And uh, the instructional philosophy, again, is watch one, do one, teach one, watch one, do one, and then teach one. And so here, uh, under watch one, if you can view it, you can do it. That's one of my quotes here. If you can view it, you can do it. And uh, this all has to deal with modeling for them to be able to watch. I believe that more things are caught than taught. So if I'm dissecting a heart and I am trying to show them uh, the left and right atrium or ventricle or the bicuspid and tricuspid valves, I will literally go in and do the dissection so they can see how it's done properly. And then uh, we allow the students to uh, follow that, but they need to watch it. They need to see it being modeled. And then here's some bones. We're modeling some bones for a student and then do one. Um, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing wrong a lot of times until you can get it right. And this is what we believe. I don't believe a student is wrong. I believe they just need to learn the right way to do it. And so perfection is not our goal. And I try to share with them all the time. I mean, I cut it right, Dr. Wade. Don't worry about that. Perfection is not our goal. Improvement is our goal. Every day, I want you to improve. Every day, I want you to get a little bit better. And so now you're doing it. You saw me do it. Now you're doing it and I'm encouraging you as you perform. And so here uh, a student is uh, putting a tourniquet on, but the student is doing the procedure while the instructor is watching. That's uh, do one. So uh, they're now doing what the instructor did and now they're able to watch. And then finally, this is their opportunity to teach someone else. And this is now to teach one. This is your opportunity to pass it along, to pass it forward, and to make the next generation under you stronger. So the seniors make the juniors stronger, the juniors make the sophomores stronger, and the sophomores are empowering and helping uh, some of the scary freshmen. And so here, and then teach one. And here it is, our senior, this is uh, our pre-med president, uh, Gabby. She is teaching uh, blood pressure. And so she saw me do it. We taught her, we have here what's called a vitals day, where we take the blood pressure of the majority of the staff and the students create a chart and allow people to see what their blood pressures are. And, you know, the teacher's blood pressure is a little bit higher than uh, normal. <laughs> Uh, and so this is uh, how knowledge is so valuable and it does not have true value until we share it. So I want the students to understand it's not just about you learning, but it's also about you sharing. And then one of my distant mentors, John Maxwell, he just says it so eloquently. You can read that. But the essence of his quote is that it is important that no matter what we know, we really don't know the depth of our knowledge and the limits of our knowledge until we are challenged in competition and being around others. So we love anatomage because we get to have competitions where our students can compete uh, on the on the board. And here they are right there. They're competing. Um uh, and and so they you you can see at this moment they develop passion and strategy on how to use it because some of them are like super smart but others know just how fast to tap it and it becomes you you ran a few of those yes what do you think um yeah I run them and I think that it really helps them because it like shows them like how to compete and how to like find it like when they're doing it instead of versus me teaching. Yeah. Yeah. So the teaching is good, but I think watching the students compete like that is just so amazing. And it has been uh, a tremendous help and it's fun. It's, it's fun for them. So uh, there we are. That's anatomage. That's we, that's our students. That's our program. Uh, this is what we do. We're, we're trying to improve every year to, uh, to make our program strong. And anatomage has really given us a huge boost uh, and just a tremendous steroid shot for our program. And uh, we're excited about it. So there you are. And thank you all so much. We're, we're very thankful and uh, we're very happy that we could share what we're doing here uh, in Panama City. So, Jake, thank you all again. And uh, Ms. Murphy, thank you for your time and your effort. Have a great day.